Hello, welcome to our video module on split plot design. On our last video, we, or not our last video, on our last class, we took a look at nested design and combined it with multiple factors. Today, we're going to take a look at a different derivation of factorial design, and this is split plot design. We use split plot when we have multiple factors, often when we can't randomize the order of the runs. So what I've done here is I've put in a, this is, this is in some example data from um, a situation where you have three different pulp prep methods. And the pulp prep methods are, they're pretty extensive. They're hard to do. You can't just like prepare one in 30 seconds. It takes time. So what people decide to do, the experimenters decided to do is they uh, are trying three different pulp prep methods. They're going to do pulp preparation method one. And then they're going to randomize. They're going to run it, say, 225. They'll run that. They'll get, the, they'll get their response. And then they're going to run it 200, 275, whatever, because they can change the temperature pretty quickly. So they're going to do a batch right here. It's, an, it's, it's a hard change. It's a hard to change factor, this pulp preparation method. And then they're going to run the, this temperature. Then what they're going to do is they're going to do pulp preparation method two another hard to change factor. So they're gonna go through whatever that requires. Maybe it's like an hour's worth of work or a day's worth of work, who knows? And from there, they can once again, randomize the easy to change factors. That's down here, temperature, and so on. They'll do the same for three. That entire process is their first replicate. No one can imagine blocking on this. And then they'll do the same process for replicate two, same process for replicate three. Well, what do we see here? We see that, say for this sample right here, this 41, we haven't just randomly chosen pulp prep method two, 225. Rather, we're only randomizing by the temperature. Now, as we've seen before with blocking, that when we decide to change our randomization, we have the same situation here. We look at this because this happens a lot. A lot of the times you'll have one factor that's very hard to change and several factors you want to check with that that are much easier. What does this look like? Well, we call this our whole plots. This is the split plot design. The whole plots are the hard to change factors. The subplots are the easy to change factors. And the reason we call it split plot or whole plot is because this comes directly from agriculture. You're not going to randomize an entire field and then go randomly to another field, fully randomized. Rather, you're gonna look at one field and you're going to administer some sort of treatment there. Maybe it's a different seeding rate. Maybe it's a um, different additions, different chemicals, whatever the case may be. So what have we done? In replicate one, right here, this whole group, we've selected one prep method, a whole plot, and then we're going to repeat for the second and the third, and then we're gonna do replicate two, replicate three. So taking a look at the map or the effects model here, we have the average, the tau is the impact of your replicates plus your whole plot, beta j, plus the, the interaction term between your replicate and your whole plot. Then we almost separate this because this is the whole plot section. And now we move to the subplots. We have the subplots in effect. We have the subplot and the replicate. And then finally, we have the subplot with the whole plot interaction events. So when we run the analysis, this is basically what we see, our model terms and our expected mean square on the right. I don't expect you, anyone would be memorizing this, but they're definitely useful information to have at hand. Now finally, what does an actual split plot table look like? The top section is the whole plot error, or the whole plot section, the bottom is the subplot section. So this is the value of split plot, is we can, we can divide the error and our F values based on the whole plot and based on the subplot. The whole plot error is based on the replicates interaction with the whole plot, and the subplot error is based on the replicates interaction with the subplot factor. Finally, your degrees of freedom follow the same basic rules Replicates, remember there were three replicates in this case, so we do three minus one, the levels, um, minus one is your degrees of freedom. There were three whole plots, so three minus one is two, and if we want to find the uh, whole plot error, if we if it chose four, we're basically going to take degrees of freedom times degrees of freedom. Down here, we're going to follow the same rules. We have temperature 
well, if there were four levels, right? One, two, three, four. So we'd expect the degrees of freedom to be three, total number of measurements minus one, and your subplot error, you do, you're going to subtract from these to get that. Or you can do the replicate degrees of freedom times the degrees of freedom of AB. So that'd be two times six, 12. So in summary, when we look at split plot design, we're basically separating the whole plot error from the subplot error. And we're doing that when we have a hard to change factor and an easy to change factor, and we're treating them separately. Finally, when we get to class, we'll take a look at what to do with fancy split plots. Maybe we have the multiple stage, or we have uh, whole plots intersecting with whole plots, whatever the case may be. I look forward to seeing you then.